I do want to welcome you. I'm excited. Um, I know it's hard to commit with work and with COVID, but there's something about committing. I want to say it again, that the Lord blesses. So I want, I want to raise your level of expectancy. Just to give you kind of a little housekeeping, we're gonna, each day I'm going to do a teaching that'll be on Facebook Live at 12, but then it'll be housed inside this Facebook page so you can watch it at any time. So if you miss it or you come late or you can't find it, don't worry, it'll be there. It's going to be up for like three weeks, so you're, you're going to be able to watch it. I'm not going to leave it up past that time, so I'm just letting you know because it's, I want to keep an urgency on you. Part of moving your life forward is being committed with a with a consistency so um you'll have some extra time to get it done but i'm just i want you to have like an urgency to come back an urgency to sit with the lord so today we're going to talk about imagination i know in the body of christ um people hear that word and sometimes it's imagination and meditation okay we are going to use our imagination and we're going to meditate a lot of people in religion have made those ugly words they have made those because new age or antichrist somebody that doesn't follow the lord have taken that and skewed it and used it okay just like everything in the bible everything god does the enemy tries to mimic it so i just want to really like provoke you with those two words if if something about you kind of goes oh I don't know about meditation. I don't know about um, imagination. I really want to provoke that in you because if it is, if you're excited, great. If you're kind of like, ah, then I want you to really read these scriptures. I've, I've posted some scriptures in the file category of the Facebook page because I want you to get in the word yourself because if you have an unrest about something, I want, I want to encourage you to look it up in the word. Like, don't trust what I say. If your spirit's like resistant, it's either religion, it's a mindset, it's something about it that God wants to train you up in. But this whole session that we're doing is based in your belief system. So I am, if there's a time that you feel um, resistant, I want you to go underneath and say, what, what is it that I'm resisting? What is it that I'm, what's going on with me right now? That this whole teaching has the, the undertones of that. I want to invite you, if you can turn your phone off, be still and be present so that you can hear the Lord. Because I really feel like the Holy Spirit, I am just a mouthpiece. It's not anything I'm going to say. I'm going to say some things that the Holy Spirit is going to minister to you. So I really want to encourage you to um, get real still and give yourself this time. I have um, just checking a few more people here I'm trying to get online okay so let's I want to start with prayer I have this little cup I just bought the other day and it says first start with prayer okay that is just something that everybody needs to write on a post-it right now the reason I named it this this um, five-day challenge believe bigger pray bolder prayers the second component of praying is you can only pray to the level of your belief system, okay? If you're gonna pray wherever the cap of your belief system is. So the goal is to raise your belief system. So I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna, um, let me open in prayer and then I'll tell you a little story. So Father, I just, oh Father, we just praise you, Lord. We bless your name, Lord. We thank you, Lord, Father, that we can come and we can worship you and we can learn. Father, just pray right now that everybody that has joined this, that you would give them eyes to see and ears to hear on a whole nother level, Lord. Your word says that you, Jesus, open up the scripture so that we have understanding, Lord. We cannot even have understanding unless you choose to allow us to. So I just petition the throne today with this group of people, Lord, and I just want to bring you to your remembrance that they're coming boldly, that they're coming with expectancy. And Lord, when you say when we seek and we ask and knock, we're doing the knocking right now, Lord. So I know, Lord, you say that you will open doors, that you will open the scriptures, you will give us eyes to see. And so, Lord, I thank you that the people that will listen to this, that you, the Holy Spirit, will minister to them, give them eyes to see, ears to hear, that only you can do, Lord, the word and your spirit. So we lift this 
five day challenge up to you. I lift these people up to you, oh God. Father, we cry out during this time, Lord. Father, that there might be chaos on the outside, but Lord, there's peace on our inside. There might be riots on the outside, but there's revival in our homes. There might be um, people warring, Lord, unrest, chaos, no peace. But Lord, we have the peace of God that's inside of us, Lord. Let us sit in this secret place today. I unleash legions of angels to stand guard and do a hedge of protection over every person where they are. Father, the enemy cannot snatch up the word that you're going to deposit in them today because the angels will stand like scarecrows until the, the word takes root and they receive a harvest, just like, just like a scarecrow would do in the natural, angels do in the spirit. So Lord, let them get a vision of that. We praise you and we honor you in Jesus' name. Okay, if you're just jumping on, if y'all would type in the um, remarks, just maybe sh shoot me your name. If you're just getting here, if you're excited, who's excited? Y'all give me a thumbs up. We're going to start today, and the, the title of today is Imagination, and we're going to talk about, we're going to tap into what do you want? What are the desires of your heart? So I want to tell you a story that, that kind of based this little lesson, if you will, what it's based in. I have a couple of prayer partners. I'm on a couple of prayer teams, but I have um, one that I pray with Amy. She's on the line right here, Amy and Ann. So they're just poor, they're prayer partners that I've prayed with for a number of years. And you remember I always talk about if you and whatever you invest in, you'll re receive a return. Like if you don't invest in something, you can't expect a return. Like you're coming today and you're investing time. You're in, you're being still. Scripture says that be still and you will know. Knowledge means to know. He will give you knowledge of your still, meaning you're listening, you're, you're focusing on him, you have expectation, you're getting with the spirit and the word and you're dwelling. So as you sit and listen, whatever you invest in has a return. And so because I've prayed for so many years with these two ladies, the Lord always speaks in this prayer room. I mean, I go, and when I need a word, or I need movement, or I need to get something else, I always go to these two people. They're like my, I have a number of other people. I have my men, personal mentor, and you know, so you have investments in more. There's never one person. I want you to really get that. God never gives everything to one person. That's why we need a community. It's so important to have community, because in a community of like kind, not just community, community of like kind. See, we are like kind because we're Christ followers, because we're seekers, because today we've come with great expectations. So with the, there's a lifting that happens in a community of like mind or masterminds. That's what masterminds are. So what we're doing here today is based in this little story. So we were praying and I, um, I was praying with this, these two ladies and kind of got long winded. And so I jumped in the car and headed towards the health club. And so as I'm, as I'm driving to the health club, they're praying and I'm listening and I'm praying. And, and so we get to the, I get to the health club and I stop in the parking lot. And so then I'm being still when I get there because the, there's a lot of movement happening. I can feel the Lord's ready to speak. And so I just wanted to press in. So I, I got still and they were praying, they were praying. And I heard just so clear, I'm raising your level of belief. Well, he actually said y'all's. I'm raising y'all's level of belief. And I was like, well, we, we weren't even praying for that. That's just how the Lord does. So I want y'all to really camp on that little, he, the Lord is going to speak some things to you that you may not have been expecting to hear. So don't put God in a box. Be open, open, open. And so I sat there and they're praying and then we're talking and and I said, y'all, the, the Lord just told me that he's raising, he's raising our level of belief. And they just kept talking like, oh, yeah, that's good. Because, see, when you personally get a word, personally get a word, um, if you get the word, you see, then you get a picture of it. You get a, it's a personal word, okay? So when you get a personal word, you, you can go to the bank on it. Like a word from God that you got. Not that you can't get a word from somebody else, but it doesn't have the depth that when you get it for yourself. And so he's really been ministering that to me because this is what was interesting. I kind of stopped him like, he's going to raise our level of belief. And so I sat there a minute and I thought, now these two women probably have the highest level of faith for a lot of the people that I know. And so I was sitting there at that moment thinking, 
oh, that's interesting. Like, he's going to raise it. And so he's really been ministering to me that it's glory to glory. It's done according to your faith. The just shall live by faith. You, it's impossible pleasing without faith. Your prayers, love, your prayers worketh by faith. Everything has to do with your level of your belief. And so God says, hey, I'm trying to raise it because I want to get more stuff to you. I want to get more understanding. I've got more people I need, you know, to, to head your way for the harvest. I want to increase. I want to answer your prayers you've been praying. But you're going to have to believe. You've been praying for increase or you've been praying for job promotion. I've got to raise your level of belief because you're confessing that to me as, my high, as your high priest. And I'll meet you at your highest confession. So whatever you believe, in your heart, you're going to confess with your mouth, even unto salvation. That's salvation prayer. So you have to believe it to be able to confess it. So how do you believe? So first of all, I just want to camp on a few scriptures, starting with Acts 2.17, that he says in the latter days, in the last days, these are the last days. Okay, these are the last days. How long is it going to be before Christ? We do not know. But these are the last days. Clearly, clearly you can see it. He says, I'll pour out my spirit. Okay? Because the power is in his spirit. All things are possible with his spirit in us. Okay? He's going to pour out his spirit. But how's he pouring it out? Okay? So I want you to really get a, a picture, a vision, an understanding. He said, people will prophesy. So that's words. You create with your words. But there's something that happens before your words, okay? It has to be a thought. As a man thinketh, so shall he be. It says in Proverbs, if you don't think it first, because the seed is the thought, believe it when you think it, you believe it, you plant it in your heart, it comes out of your mouth. You're going to say what you believe. So if you raise your level of belief, you'll automatically start prophesying it because you're going to say what you believe all right so he's going to pour out his spirit they're going to prophesy that's words they're going to dream dreams and have visions so i want you to really get an understanding a dream and a vision are both pictures when you get a dream it's a movie pic pictures that are moving it's pictures it's an image it comes from your thoughts, your imagination. Your imagination is images. You're imagining things all the time, whether they're Christ-like or not. So why Philippians 4, 6 through 9 says, to think upon things that are good and righteous, pure, holy, because that's the things that the Lord wants us to move towards. He knows if we think upon them, he said, first cast your worry to me, get it out of your mind, then think upon things that are good and righteous, pure, lovely, holy, because then you're going to move towards that. If you think it, you're going to eventually say it, and then you're going to move towards it. The definition to imagination is thinking in pictures, okay? It's, it's perceiving something that you cannot see with the natural eye. So really, an imagination, a dream or a vision, because a vision is... Dreams are usually at night, not always, but you can get into like a middle state between sleep and sleeping. Um, and then a vision you can get when you're completely awake. It's, but it's the same thing. It's either a picture or it's a number of pictures. But if it's a number of pictures, it's, they're all connected together. It's a series. But both of those are pictures. So I want you to get the importance, the wow factor, the oh my gosh, pictures images or how we create he even says in his word that um when they did the when he just disrupted the tower of babel they were going to build the tower up into the skies all the way to heaven and the lord said oh my gosh we've got to go scramble their words because they know if they believe it and they're saying it and they get in unity that's the mastermind the like-minded then they can do it okay now they, that, so that means you can do bad things and you can do good things. It works the same. Just like if you have gifts and talents, you can use them in the flesh for whatever, lust of the flesh, self-gratification, or you can use them to serve the Lord. 
but you still have the gifts. The same thing happens when you create by an image, okay? You get a picture. That's why pornography is so hellacious and why the enemy tries to use it because once those pictures are embedded, it's hard to get a picture out of it. Or if somebody has trauma, they replay the pictures. They keep replaying the pictures until they've replaced that with new images, new pictures, okay? Ask the Lord to remove them and then you replace them. That's why you renew your mind with the word. You read the word, you get a picture because as you're reading it, it tells a story which creates pictures. So even if you think, um, so I want you, your imagination, Ephesians 3.20, I can do immeasurably more than you can ask or imagine. Okay, so ask is by words. You see, they're always holding hands. You believe it and you say it. Believe it and you say it. It's the way we get saved. It's the very root of the, it's the very essence of salvation. So Ephesians 3.20, it says that you believe it, but you can, when you ask it, you can do immeasurably more than you can ask. Or imagine okay so let's just talk about imagine in this context it means to think to believe for to get fixed upon like imagination is your thinking it's done in your mind it's done in your soul your mind your will and your emotions is your imagination is in there okay and so if you can use your mind to imagine get a vision get a dream for the things of God for what God has, then you can move. To, you can move towards things that aren't of God. But we are not. I want to make that so clear right now. We are so not talking about getting a vision or a dream or imagination, using our imagination for our own gain. Okay. Now God's going to pr prosper you. I mean, I don't want you to get tripped up in religion that you're not supposed to use your imagination to think about your job and how you can increase in your job, or to think about how you can gain friends and influence people you know, and learn communication skills. You can do all that and it's, it can be for self gratification because you're personally training, growing, but the goal is to glorify God. The goal is to learn this stuff so that you can be in a bigger picture of storing up eternal treasure that will be rewarded for when Jesus returns. That's our jewels. That's our, our, um, things that will not burn up when he returns. The things that burn are selfish gain, things of the world, um, the things that are refined and are of God and that are eternal, they're jewels and they're gold. They will never burn up. We will have those in an eternal account and we will get rewarded. Okay, that's what we're talking about here. But there's an enmeshing because he says, I'll give you the desires of your heart. So God gave you these desires so that he could fulfill them for you. He's not going to plant in you if you're an entrepreneur and you're a good business person and you love even making money so that you can build the kingdom. That's in the, if it's for God and not selfish gain, then that's how God made you. That's how he wired you. But what happens is religion and there's a fine line. You have to keep your knee bowed. And is it for God? Humility. Blessed is the meek, the humble, because he will inherit the earth. He will inherit all the things of God because he will not be ruled, Matthew 5, 5, by the outside circumstances because he, his heart is towards the Lord and the Lord knows our hearts. He searches the heart of a man. He creates in us a clean heart. But I want you to really strip the religion away and have a freedom. When I ask you these questions, we go through this exercise, have a freedom to answer them, not the good Christian way that religion would expect you to answer, because we're trying to get out of your heart what's in it. And look, you might find out, God might show you some things that he's not pleased with. That's a, that's conviction and it's good, okay? But we didn't, we're not here just to find things he's not pleased with. We're here to find what he put in us and that he wants to draw out of us so that he can move us in the things that he planted in us before we were ever born. But I want to give you full permission to answer these questions honestly, because it's going to, it's going to do, the Holy Spirit's doing a, a work in each of our hearts. Okay. So, but he's definitely taken us. The sanctification process takes you from glory to glory. Okay. Is some, is this making sense? Are y'all following me on this? Y'all give me some, give me some um, thumbs up. 
Let me know. Give me some energy. Let me know if y'all are, are liking this. If it's if it's under you know, if it's making sense to you. Okay, so um, when you talk about in Joshua one eight, Joshua one eight says that um, you meditate upon the word. Okay, so there it is again. The words you think about his word, the saying, and then you, you believe it, think upon it, and say it. Meditate upon it, and then say it. You think upon words, which are what you will say. Okay, so he says, and obey it. Think upon it and obey it. But I want to camp on the meditation part. Think upon there. Meditate on my word, he says. When you meditate upon the word there, it's the same thing. It's to say it, to mutter it. So you see, meditation even is saying it. Thinking about it, think, putting, playing it over in your mind, um, thinking about it all the time. That's meditation. But it's not new age meditation where you meditate, and I'll tell you what it is right here, you, where you meditate um, on other gods or other energies or other or the light or the universe. We are not talking about that. I want to make this so clear. We are talking about God and God alone. We're meditating on his word and getting up images, dreams, visions, pictures that he is dropping in our spirit or that was already planted in the, and we're drawing out of our spirit that was inside of us before we were ever seeds of greatness already in us but it's, to kings have to search it out and so that's what we're doing today so lord i just pray that you would show your people specifically their seeds of greatness use their imagination to give them images of a dream or a vision or a picture lord of what you're goal for them, what your treasure for them, what your jewels for them, what your work, your good deeds, Lord, that you will reward us for. Show them what the their good deeds, what these components look like. Give them images, Holy Spirit, that only you can give. Okay, so meditation is to engage in thought or to reflect, and it's not transcendental meditation. We made that real clear. That is not it. Even though that word can mean that, that is not what we mean. We're talking about meditating on the things of God, the word of God. So the faculty of imagining is getting mental energy, mental images. So I want you to just get, it's a picture, it's a vision or a dream. It's a picture. Okay, it's a picture. So these thoughts that you think, spiritual thoughts, okay, things of God, we're not talking about worldly. Remember, we're going to, I always show this, we're in the middle of God's bandwidth. We're not in the world out here. We are in the center of his bandwidth. We're serving him, bowed to him, hearing from him, drawing up out of our spirit man what the Holy Spirit has planted in us before we were born. All that is of God and God alone. When you think a thought, that is pure and righteous and good that came from the Lord. When you receive a picture from the Lord, you get a picture, then that is a spiritual seed. Okay, so you're, that thought is actually a seed. It gets planted, and then it, you, you keep meditating, thinking about it, visualizing it over and over. You get a picture of it. That's why vision boards work. Okay, people that create vision boards, they work because vision boards are it's what I, really what I'm telling you about right here is that as a man thinketh, so shall he be. What you focus on expands. All that's scripture. If you think upon it, you'll be that. We want to do that. That's what I'm encouraging you to do. I want you to think upon what is it that God has for me that nobody else can fulfill. That's what we're talking about. Okay, so Im images are powerful. And, you know, Mark eleven twenty three 23 says, if you believe when you say it, you'll get what you say. Well, the only way you can believe it is if you first think it. And remember, we're raising our level of belief so that we can see it in the spirit. You can only see what you can believe for. That's why God gives visions and dreams, because he increases. He, he, we search it out, and we get the meaning, and then we hold on to it. And we're like, oh my gosh, that's something, it's a promise. That's what his word is, it's a promise. So then, if we can raise our belief, it's done according to your belief, okay? If we can raise our level of belief, then we can have higher faith, and then we can, this is the 
bolder prayer part. We can petition the throne with bolder prayers because we already saw it. We know it's ours. God has promised us this. We can believe for it because we can see it. If you can see it, you can have it. If you can see it, it'll come forth. Okay? So, let's say if, um, if, you, if you think upon being sick every day of your life, all the time, you will self-prophesy, self-fulfill your vision, your words, whatever you're thinking upon. You will self-fulfill being sick. Because his word says that by his stripes you are healed. So if you focus on that and you call yourself healed and you see in your mind's eye, you see yourself well and active and strong. And if you see that, then you can believe for it. If you see it, and then you say it, you see it and you say it, you see it and you say it over and over and over that all of a sudden you'll be walking in it, okay? Whatever you see yourself do, you will manifest it from, the, from heaven onto this earth. You will call it forth the things that are already in heaven that will be done as though it's already in heaven on this earth as it already is there on this earth that Jesus is the Jacob's ladder. You can call forth whatever you need. So if if you want to know why your life is working, pay attention to your words. If you know want to know why your life is not working in a certain pay attention to your words. You get the fruit of your lips and you have to see it. Imagine it first before you say it. You will only say what you believe for. You can't you might read the word, but you can tell somebody that really believes. Because when they might just read it, hoping to believe, that's, you know, they're declaring it. But when you see it and you can declare it, you could say, I know. This is for me. You have a you have a strength. That's the bolder prayer. You pray the bolder prayer when you can believe it. Okay. So I just want you to know that there are seeds of greatness inside of you that were planted in you before your mother was even had you in your womb. He knew you before you were ever formed. God himself knew you. You have been, you are fearfully and wonderfully made and you can only carry out the things that he predestined for you. He's given you gifts and talents that are irrevocable to use, but it's up to you whether or not you use them. But he says it's for you kings to search out what the meaning is, what your destination is. And look, you've already, already got some of it just overflowing in your life right in front of you. Everything you need is already in your hand or your heart. It's already in your hand or your heart. And God will position you, open doors, make a way for you when you start moving. But that's a key. That's key. We're not going to go over that today. But this does not just happen on its own. I want to commend you for coming today because the fact that you showed up tells me you're hungry to move forward in what God has for you. And amen. I just want to know why everybody isn't. I mean, it is, it's good stuff. Okay, so today I want you to raise your level. You can even write this as a declaration. I'm raising my level of belief. I'm increasing. I'm, I'm moving these limitations up. I'm John Maxwell calls it a cap. I'm taking this cap off because there's a cap that can get put on you by what people said. So it caps you at that position. But God says, I'm raising that level of belief. I'm taking that cap off because all things, not some things, not when it's COVID. He said all things are possible with me because I'm God. Okay, in Christ Jesus, it comes through him. That's the Jacob's ladder, everything. So how are you seeing yourself? Because that's what your life is. If you see yourself sick, you will be sick. If you see yourself well, you will be well. If you see yourself prosperous, you will be prosperous. You know, a lot of people say, well, I don't think I'm supposed to make money. Well, guess what? You won't. You don't have to worry about it. You won't. If that's what you think, if that's what you believe, then that's what you get. But if you say, you know, God wants me to be prosperous. He says to enjoy the fruit of my labor. He says that he gave me the ability to get wealth. Why did he give me the ability to be well, get wealth? So I could take care of myself because he gives bread to the eater and he gives seed to the sower so then I could sow seeds into others, which is I'm blessed to be a blessing. So see, give it, he gives it to you to eat and pay for care of your needs because he gives you the desires of your heart. And a lot of times the desires of your heart cost money. Not all of them. I mean, peace, you can't buy peace, but you do need to buy some groceries. You do need to buy gas. You do need to buy vacation with your, your kids if you go somewhere. So I'm, I'm pressing on your, on your belief system right here because I'm provoking. If you're, if you're feeling like, 
If there's resistance on anything I'm saying, take a note. Take a note because that's golden nuggets there if there's resistance, okay? Okay. Now, just so you know, there's imagination. Ephesians 4, 17 talks about, 17 through 24 talks about vanity of the mind. They use their imagination in the wrong way. Vainness, wanting the lust of the flesh. So you can use your imagination for the lust of the flesh. That's not, what we're, that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about using our imagination to get an image, a dream and a vision of what God has for you, what your work is, what your purpose is, what makes, what rocks your world. As my husband says, we were going through some of this drinking coffee Saturday and he goes, um, oh, that makes me happy. And I'm like, God, you can see and you see it when you say that. That's how you know. That's how you know. I was talking to a friend the other day and she said she had met with somebody and visited with them and she said, I just left there and I just knew that's what I'm supposed to be doing. That's how you know. If you're not walking in that, if you're not like feeling it, if you're not sure of it, then God's saying, press in and let me talk to you. Let me show you what I have for you. Because when you are walking in the gifts and talents and what God has for you, money comes, provision comes, doors open, and you walk around with so much excitement that you cannot contain it. You cannot contain it. Okay, Romans 121 also talks about vain imagination. So it shows you you can have an imagination. It's just how do you use it. Um, you can see John 14, 21 says um, that we're able to see the same as Jesus, do the same things Jesus did. Nothing can manifest or come forth or be brought down from heaven. Nothing can come forth into the natural unless you first have seen it on the inside, in the spirit. Your inside or your spirit man, your inner temple is your spirit man. The outside world is where we live today. This is, this is where we're just taking a residence right now. But we want our inside to be connected to our eternal treasure because we're going to spend eternity there. But while we're here, we've got work to do. And the work, that's what we're camping on here is what is my work? What is it my purpose? What is it that I'm going to stand before him and get my rewards? The last thing Jesus said. So I'm coming soon and bringing with me my rewards to give to each person according to the good works that they did. Not their cousin, not their husband, their wife. No, the works they did. Like we're going to stand before him. Now that's not getting into heaven. Okay, you get into heaven by faith. That's number one. But then the Bama seat, the judgment seat, where you're going to receive rewards for your good works. That's a whole nother level. Okay, so now what you do, how you show up is a reflection of how you see yourself. Okay, so we talk about worth a lot of times and where your worth comes from. When you can see yourself, it's the same concept. We're not gonna camp there, I just wanted to cover that, that when you can see yourself as, like I see myself as righteous. Now that's probably provoked somebody right there, but I am righteous. And see, I'm just stopping. Comma, by the blood, okay? I want to just kinda like, it's okay for me to say that, but I need to make sure that I stay with my knees bowed because I'm not even the breath I breathe. It belongs to my God. He breathed breath into me. I have been made righteous by the blood of Jesus. But when you know you're righteous and you receive that gift, you walk with confidence in Christ, in Christ alone. That's what we're raising your level of belief. I am righteous. I am chosen. We just studied that in Ephesians. I am chosen. And I have available to, available to me every spiritual gift through Christ Jesus. Every physical, material thing I need to accomplish my work through Christ Jesus. Every bit of understanding, wisdom through his spirit. That's how I receive that. But all things are possible. How? through and with Christ, in Christ, because I'm in him. But when you know who you are, and like I see myself with a crown on my head, I am crowned, it says in Psalms. You, I want you to see yourself. You are crowned, it says in Psalms, with favor. 
the anointing of God when he's tested you and he will he will give you a, he will send you out and see how you how you steward this anointing how you steward his favor how you treat his people and when you steward it well he gives you more because he was given more more is expected so guess what you get he's expected to go get another test see how, what you're going to do now with what's in your hand how, can i trust you with what's in your hand can you look at me and me alone? Can you trust, rely, and depend on me and not look to the right or the left at Kathy and Susie and John, but look at what I have for you and be content in this and know that it is good, that I give you every good gift, that I am for you and not against you, that I, who can be against you if I'm for you, that you are, I have shielded you, it says in Psalms 91, it says in, in Genesis 15, 1, the Lord alone is my shield and my reward. When you have a knowing, you show up confident. So you show up according to your belief system. And what we're doing is we're raising our level of belief so that we can have the mind of Christ. Because I'm pretty sure that my heart cry is for the body of Christ that does not believe what Jesus and God says they are or what they can have or what they can do. Because he said that you can have the mind of Christ. Now, there's some work to do. You have to renew your mind and line it up with the word. You have to think like he would think. But if I can have the mind of Christ, that means I can do all things. Anything that he and I, because we're going to co-create. He's my business partner. If God, he says, lift up my plans unto him, and he'll make them successful. Romans 8, 28, no such thing as failure in my world because he'll turn everything around for good. There is no failure. He's a multiplier. He will restore sometimes a hundredfold, double, whatever, whatever you can believe for. If you can believe for it, he says, do you believe I can? You're healed. Do you believe I can? You got a job. Do you believe I can? Fill in the blank. Have y'all heard the saying, a picture is worth a thousand words? Think about that. Even that's connected. A picture is worth a thousand words. You want to get a picture. Because once you see it, you can believe for it. God gives words, visions, and dreams. They're all for movement. They're all for increase. And they all, words when you say them, you get a picture. Dreams and visions are a picture. Everything is an image. The enemy has told the body of Christ, do not use your imagination. I'm here to tell you today it's a lie from hell. God gave you your mind and your imagination to create like he does. You think it and then you say it. You think it, you believe for it, think it, believe for it, say it. That's what meditation is. Think it, believe it, say it. Watch for it. Expect it. Now, okay, I want to, there's a little, <laughs> there's a little side clause. There are, we studied this last week in Bible study. You have to be obedient to the Lord. He is not a genie, okay? I just need to make sure that there's nobody thinking, oh, I'm just going to say that I want a million dollars, I'm going to get it. No, you're not, okay? I'm just going to, like, no, you are not. Can, will God give people a million dollars? Absolutely. He's not just going to give you a million dollars. If you have been tried and tested and he knows that you're going to use that money how he tells you, then he may very well, you can believe for a million dollars. You can. But just to ask him for it out of nowhere, and because I'm going to take some vacations and buy some new cars, that's not God. Okay? Obedience, a relationship, a speaking and knowing what it is that you're here to do so that you can be tested on am I putting my hand to that? Then you can have the things of God, the flow. When you're like this with the Lord and he knows he can trust you, okay, it's a whole nother walk. He pours out blessings that you cannot contain because he knows that you're going to, they're coming from Christ, through Christ, to you, back to him. Back to him. Not for us. They go back to him. We get to glory in it, enjoy the fruits of it, but it's always to glorify him. It's always. So I want to like put a side clause on that. This is not a genie in the bottle. This is, this is a, for a person that is, um, not not drinking milk but wants to meet get on meat and have a relationship with the lord that this is going to be first this relationship is first over everything else every other relationship god and god alone when he says there's no other god that means he and he alone is the one that you serve you get up in the morning you want to hear from even before your husband your wife your friend and then once that's established and he's been tried you it's glory to glory to glory and i'm pretty sure everybody listening knows a taste of that 
I'm just encouraging you today that he's saying to you, I have come to raise your level of belief. Okay, I'm prophesying over you right now. He's saying to you, I want you to believe for more. I want you to look at who I am and what I say, not what the media says. I want you to say, what is it? that I, ask me, ask me, what is it that I have for you? And then I want you to go possess it. I want you to be courageous and step out into it. Okay, so now, let me see what time it is. It's almost one. Um, okay, great, 12.45. Okay, so next we're going to um, do the little exercises. These are gonna give you insight. So what I really wanted you to do, if, if it's all possible, I want you to, um, Invest in yourself. Turn your phone off. Be still. If, you, if you're able to. If you can't, you may even want to come back tonight and do this when you can be quiet and still because then you can hear God speak. Okay? And I, you know, I, <laughs> I went to do some, um, this, it was a five-week transformational work that I did in California where I had to fly there five different times. It was so intensive. And um, I, I was going, I thought, well, I'm going to go, Build my, I'm going to work on my business and my ministry. That's what I'm going over there for. Okay, so that's what I went over there for. God will use whatever speaks to you. So don't, there's no condemnation in any of this, okay? God meets you right wherever you are, but he's not leaving you there. He's calling you. He wants you to break through, break forth, and, and, and he's calling you out of that place. Okay, so I, I went for probably the third time, okay? And then at the third time, um, I, you basically had... They, did, they said, pick something that you want to work towards. And that's kind of the work that, that I'm going to be doing in my 15-week class is we're going to pick one thing and go deep so that it prospers so mighty and flourishes so mighty. There's such increase there. So I thought it was going to be my business and my ministry, okay? So I want to say to you, keep an open mind and let the Holy Spirit lead you because he knows what he's trying to do in your heart. He knows what... what tools you need he knows where your foundation needs stabilizing and when you allow him to lead you it is good he said taste and see taste and see okay so i went over there and i was just thinking okay it's my business and it's my ministry you know and it wasn't it was my marriage the lord said no i want you to focus completely on your marriage and i'm like oh oh i think my marriage is good lord i mean and it was good but he's like no it's a whole nother level that I'm taking you on. I need this so sound and solid because I need that established first. See, he has a God of order and he always is going in the perfect divine order. You do not want to miss what the Holy Spirit says. Okay, so don't put him in a box. Let the Holy Spirit lead you on these answers. He already knows what's, God knows what's in your heart. Write whatever comes out. Because out of the heart flows the issues. Out of the heart flow the good things. Out of the heart flow the good seed. Out of the heart flow the trash. You want to get whatever comes out so that you can heal it, let go of it, do forgiveness. Or you can know this is refinement. This is the lane I'm supposed to move in. So just let everything come up. So as I, now I'm going to probably write these questions in the, um, I will write them. I'll commit to it. I'm going to commit to it. I'm going to write these questions and post them on a file. They'll be under files so that if you can't do this now, I want to really encourage you. Don't do this flighty. Just, oh, yeah, this, I know this. And be still because then knowledge comes. Be still and know. Be still and knowledge comes. Okay? So the first question, so I want you to get your paper out, and I'm going to ask you a question. And then after I ask the question, just write the first thing that comes to your mind. Don't, don't. Listen, we're getting out of our head knowledge and our logic. And I know I have a few men on the line. It's really hard for men or strong business women that operate in that male energy a lot of times, that you know, production. It's hard for you to get out of that logical thinking because that's, you're trained to do that. But I'm saying, go drop into your heart. That's your spirit, man. This, we want to hear what the Holy Spirit says. We don't want to hear what our ego, our ma mind, our logic, okay? That's our mind, our will, and our emotions, our soul. We want to hear what our spirit, God bears witness. His spirit bears witness to our spirit. Okay, so the way you do that is you, sometimes you might even want to close your eyes. That's what, usually what I do when I'm coaching one-on-one. -on -one. I have people close their eyes so they can drop into your spirit. And so I'll ask the question and then I'll pause. You have a minute to hear and then just write. 
don't worry about it if you don't know um, the answer. Just just sit there. If you don't hear anything, wait for the next question. Okay. And nothing is silly. Okay. Nothing. Any you might just get a color red and there's whatever you know. You know because I want to show you something before I start this. It's a little part I left out. We even talk in pictures. We tell stories with your pictures. Our brain thinks in pictures, okay? Logical connector, like a, a film strip. Even when you talk to people, like somebody says, oh, can you give me directions? And you say, okay, yeah, okay, so go to the end of Highland, why the water park, take a right on Bluff Road. And so you go, take a right, you're going right, and they're picturing, okay, go right by the water park. So they're picturing a water park. Okay, and then you go, okay, go down Bluff Road, and there's only one light, now they're picturing a light, okay, one light, it's about a mile, so they know the gauge. See, you're getting, we even talk in pictures. Everything's in pictures. We're just not spiritually aware, and he says in the latter days, it's prophecy, words, dreams, pictures, pictures, words that you'll say, and you'll get a picture, picture, okay? So, an image. So the first question, what do you feel like God planted in you when you were born or before you were born? What do you feel like God planted in you? And remember, these will be in the... I'm going to post these, so if I go, if you don't have enough time, honor yourself and take the time and let the Lord minister. This can be life-changing for you, okay, life-changing, because you might find out things that you've not even been aware of, okay? God's multiplying right now. The veil is thin. He's, he's pouring out his spirit right now as you're, as you're sitting here. Number two is, what do people around you say you're good at? Number three, what do you talk about all the time? Like, what, do you, what topic? And it might be a couple things. Just write whatever comes to your mind. Some of this is seasonal because if you're a mom, you talk about your kids. But don't take that. Just write that down. What do you find yourself talking about all the time to every person, grocery store, friend? Okay, number four, what gets you excited? And by that I mean you find yourself like with a heightened, you get a, you, you're like your voice gets raised. You, when you're talking about it, you just flail your hand. You just, you get like an excitement in your body. It's a feeling. It's a reflection of your voice. When you're telling somebody, you're just like in a, in a good energy. What gets you excited? And it could be an activity, it could be something you do, just what gets you excited? Okay, okay what do you want? Just fill in the blank, what do you want? It can be material things, it can be uh, experiences, it can be relationship oriented, like you may want a husband or a wife. You may want to um, do a Sunday, build a Sunday school, make a Sunday school class, create, create a Sunday school class. What do you want? What do you want to create? What do you want to build? What do you want to have? What do you want? No limit. Do not limit this. Do not get into religion and say, oh, well, I shouldn't want this. It's monetary. Or I shouldn't want this. I'm thinking about myself. I'm wanting you to think about yourself. Okay? Some of you, I'm giving you permission to be selfish. What 
do you want? Okay, this one is, what is on your bucket list? What's on your bucket list? It could be crazy stuff. Like, I want to I wanna go ride a llama. I want to go to Wyoming and um, go hiking with the llamas. Pack your stuff. Don't limit, okay, because there's going to be golden nuggets and treasure. What is your bucket list? This one, I want you to, when you were a little child, get a picture right now in your mind. What did you used to play or do when you were a child? Like, I played school, okay? I, I played school with my, and I played by myself a lot. So, when you get a picture of you, who were you with when you were a child? Who did you play with? What did you play? Okay, just think about, close your eyes and just think about when you were a little child. Who did you play with? Were you inside? Were you outside? What did you play? Like, this is a really good place to camp. What, get a picture of you as a child and then write what you did, who you played with, what games you played, what you like to wear. Okay, the next one, what would you do for free? Like, what do you find yourself staying up late to do that you hate to stop doing? What would you do for free and not, if, and not charge for it? What type of activity, work, service would you do for free that some people maybe get paid for? What do you love to do and you would do it for free? Think of a time where you were really, where you're happy and excited. What were you doing? Who were you with? Were you with a person? Were you alone? Were you in a place? Was there an activity you were doing? Like, what is it? I mean, it could be anything. I was, I love, I'm, I'm happy when I'm singing. Um, you know, what is it that you, puts a smile on your face. It makes your heart sing. Think of you looking at yourself from the outside. When is it that you are smiling and your heart's singing? Like, you know, you're just, you're just full of joy and smile on your face. What is it that you're doing when you experience that? I call it what makes your heart sing.
Okay, so what has happened in your life that has caused you to trust God? I mean, it could be something that was hard you walked through, something where you saw he did for somebody else. What in your life has caused you to trust him? What comes up right when I, when I ask that question? What experience is the experience with him? What was that experience? Okay, so I have two more questions I'm gonna ask you, and these I want you to spend a little time on. This is gonna be the homework. The first one is, what does your life look like in five years? I want you to get a piece of paper out. What does my life look like in five years? Now, that right there, I want you to take the limits off. I want you to talk about the car you'll be driving, the people that are, you'll be doing life with. If you have a marriage, it's rocking and what that looks like. What, what's, what is a marriage for you? If you're not married, you, don't, you want to be single and serving the Lord. What does that look like? Where are you going to be living? Where are you going to be going? Who are the people in your life? What does your life look like in five years? You can have financial planning in there if that's important to you. You can have relationships if that's important. You can have um, your, rela your children, just any avenue. Don't limit yourself because the gold comes out, out of the heart flows. Write, just ask the Lord, Lord, give me a vision. Lord, I pray that you give them a vision. Dr pull out of them, Lord, what it is that their life would look like. Lord, we're going into the future, Lord, so that our, our days ahead of us would be greater than our latter days, oh God. Help them, Lord, to put their eyes and all things are possible, oh God. This is what I see possible when they, this is what you see possible, oh God, for them. Let them see what it is that could be possible. Raise the level of possibility because with God, all things are possible. There's no limit on money. There's no limit on time. There's no limit on opportunity. What does your life look in, like in five years? So this is going to be homework, that question. And then the next question is what, and I'd, if you want to stay after we sign off, stay seal, still because the spirit's moving, just, just flow, okay? What in your life has happened? Oh, wait, I already said that to make you trust God. Okay, I already did that one. Okay, so the other homework is what do you see? In Isaiah, it says, hey, I'm doing a new thing. Can you see it? Can you not see it? Like, can, can you not see in the spirit? Do you have not have spiritual eyes? Can you believe for more? Can you see things that you and I can only see and the, the world can't? I'm doing a new thing. Okay, so what do you see possible? What do you personally see possible with God? Because so those are your two homework pieces. What, what does your life look like in five years? And I mean, I want you to like, create this is called dreaming okay but this is the thing people dream and they limit it because they say well you know i can i can believe for that no we're talking about what if money was no object what if time was no object age was no object none of that is no limitation you know the, it, abraham and sarah had a baby when they were 109 around 90 and 100 whatever it was that you could Look, God, with God, all things are possible. I'm trying to raise your level of belief. So you got to dream big. And see, most people dream, but they never walk in their dream. We're starting to dream and we want to move you into living your dream. Not dreaming big, but living your big dream. Okay, living your big dream is where we're headed. But you have to get a picture. We're getting a picture of what this dream looks like. So what do you look, does your life look like in the next five years, five years from now? And then... What do you see possible, okay? 
So if y'all could give me some comments on what today really stuck out, I would love for some um, for y'all to leave me comments. What has stuck out with you? Like, what is it that's the takeaway for today for you? And then I'd love for you to go on the Facebook page. And after you've written this homework, before tomorrow, um, if you would just post one or two things that, you know, what you did as a child. One of these questions, if you would, something that was a little bit aha, if you would post it in there. Okay. Now, why am I having you to post it in there? Because part of growth and transformation and moving forward is um, being vulnerable. Being vulnerable is is saying, you know what? I don't care what people think. I don't. I'm going to take that mask off. I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm going to move forward, even if I look like a fool. Okay. That's what really what keeps the body of Christ stuck is p pleasing man. Okay, worried about what man will think. I, I suffer from that. Everybody suffers from that, okay? Worried about what somebody will say, what somebody will think. So I'm saying to you, step out of that. Part of what creates momentum, gives you courage, gives you confidence, moves you forward, is to be vulnerable. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, all these are the two things I'm believing for. Because somebody might, it provokes, it's a mirror. When somebody says, well, I'm believing that I'm going to have a um, band, you know, and they're not even playing music right now. I'm going to, you know, th this is dreaming big. Because, see, God's trying to birth something in you. And it may not look like what you see right now. But if you could just see it. He says, Abraham, all these stores of your descendants, as far as you can see. Well, I'm pretty sure he didn't see as far as God was talking about in his natural eyes. He saw in the spirit. He believed by faith. And so that's what I'm saying to you. Get out of your box. Lift that lid. Increase that belief and believe what God says. All things are possible. I see so much possibility on people that would come at noon and say, I'm going to learn. I'm going to see what the Lord has to say. All things are possible for you because you showed up, because you came, because he says, when you dwell in that secret place, oh, or there's some scriptures about that. When you trust, rely, and depend on me, he, he, pours, out his, he pours out everything. So I'm going to close there because I want you to really um, be able to sit and like focus us on some of these. We're doing a little bit of this work tomorrow, and then we're going to go into blockage. We're going to, you know, but if you will do that homework, leave me, post in here, what was it that spoke to you today? Just a little nugget so I'll know kind of what, what targeted or what spoke. I would love, love, love that. So you'll have an awesome afternoon, and I'm going to see y'all tomorrow. So I'll um, be checking on the Facebook page on what y'all have to say.